Welcome to the 3 Animation Hub. My name is Brian and today I'm going to be sharing with you 10 Blender animation tips that'll make your life just that much better. Now, if your body is ready, let's hop in. All right, we're going to start this one off with something that I've become numb to. This was something that I learned about a little bit too late and it would have saved me a lot of headache and probably a lot of time. Saving your workspace and have it stay even if you're opening someone else's shot. I've made an entire video on this. I'll have a card on the top right show up for you. So I won't go into the details of making the space itself, but I'll show you how to save it. So once you watch that video and you've set up your workspace or you know set it up however you'd like, you go to edit, preferences, save and load. You make sure to uncheck load UI. And what this means is if you open someone else's shot, it will not load their UI. It will not load their workspace. So it will keep the original workspace that you created and not change it. And this is the key part. I would always set my workspace and then it wouldn't stay and I would wonder why. This is why. You want to come to save and load, uncheck load UI. Once you've done this, you come to file, go down to uh, defaults and save startup file. Again, if you haven't watched my video on how to do this, you should probably go ahead and watch that video because it is a little bit complicated. It's not so easy. So go give that a watch. But with that said, let's jump to number two. So number two for me is individual origins. Now, usually when you open Blender, uh, you get something like this. Here, let's select these three and let's rotate these. Yeah, so I selected all of these, all, like, all three controllers and in Maya, what what would happen is all of them would start uh, rotating from their own origins. So t for us to get that same effect in Blender, you want to come up here in between the magnet and uh, the global. There's this button right here. I'm going to change this to individual origins. Now, when I rotate, the fingers start rotating from their own origins. and this will save you a lot of headaches so you don't have to start rotating controls one by one just to get what you're looking for you can just select all of them and rotate all of them at the same time so number three for me would be control tab now usually if you're working with uh, multiple characters you're constantly going in and out of object mode and pose mode and so what control tab does is instead of you going up here for example right now i can't move this rig i can't actually touch any of the controls because we're in object mode. So normally you would have to come up here, change pose mode, and then go back here and now you can control it. And then if I wanna click another rig or another object, I can't because we're in pose mode. So again, you gotta come up here, go to object mode, uncheck that, click this, now I can move this. But then again, I can't move this anymore. So the magic key to keep going between these is control tab in the viewport. So you have your cursor in the viewport, I press control tab, boom, I'm in pose mode. Control tab again, I'm selecting this, I'm selecting that, whatever else is there, control tab. Instant. It saves you so much time if you're working with multiple characters, it's ridiculous. Number four. Number four for me is simplify. This is something to make your scene a little bit lighter, make it run a little bit smoother. You have to come here to the renders properties. You make your way down to simplify, check that. And you want to make sure that the maximum subdivision in the viewport is set to zero, but the, re the render maximum subdivision is set to six. So this just means that in the viewport, it won't calculate as many subdivisions as it will in the render, which it doesn't matter as much in the render because, you know, we want it to be a good quality. But in the viewport, we care about speed. So set viewport to zero, maximum subdivision to six, and this should speed up your scene a lot more. Number five. So number five is control middle mouse to scale your graph editor. If you need to zoom in somewhere or for example, let's say you, the curve you're looking at isn't big enough for you to see the difference, you can always hold control and middle mouse to scale it up. And now you can see that curve a lot better and you have a lot more control over it. So you can hold uh, control middle mouse and go up and down vertically and it'll stretch vertically, go left and right and it'll start stretching horizontally. And this gives you a lot more control over how you want to see the curve so you can control the curves better. Number six, this one's really useful when you want to bring an object to a certain place. And for example, let's say this box right here is, I don't know, a sword. 
And let's say this sword is, I don't know, all the way over there. Maybe it's loaded over there. But I need that sword to be inside this hand. Now, instead of trying to move it across and bring it up to the hand and uh, try and get it in position, God knows how far away it might be. What we're going to do instead is I'm going to select the hand here, press Shift S, and I'm going to collect cursor to select it. And that brought the 3D cursor to our hand. Next thing I'm going to do is select our sword and press Shift S again. This time I'm going to click Selection to Cursor. And now, <laughs> look at that, exactly where we want it. Well, almost exactly where we want it. And this is actually handy because when you, when you do Shift S and you bring the cursor to select it, whatever else you load into the scene will load where the 3D cursor is. So if you haven't loaded the sword in, and you want to store you want you want it to load inside a character's hand instead of you know wherever else maybe it's a really big scene you know um and i've had i have had that issue and this is something that i wish i knew earlier so instead of that i can just set the cursor to the character's hand wherever my character is and load that object in and the object will load in the character's hand so there's no trying to find it and move it and it just saves you a lot of time and so that's number six for me Number seven, so before we just covered the 3D cursor and now I would like to cover the 2D cursor with you guys. So uh, in the graph editor, let's say I want to scale my keys from here where my, uh, where my time bar is. So I'm gonna press S and I'm gonna press X. When I start scaling it, that's not quite what happens. Uh, it just starts scaling from, the, I, I don't even know which point but I wanted to start uh, scaling from where I have my time bar. So what I'm going to do is, so what I'm going to do is come here and we're going to select 2D cursor. And now when I press SX, it starts scaling from that point, from where my time bar is. So everything before and after moves, where my time bar is, those keys stay. Number eight. All right, this one's actually the most important one. Uh, so I want you to take note. So for this step, you have to absolutely annihilate the like button for the YouTube algorithm gods. Guys, my videos have been slacking, all right? Last few videos haven't been getting a lot of views. We need the love, come on. All right, no, but uh, number eight is Shift E. I, I hope you already knew this one, but if you didn't. Shift E is essentially uh, a tweener. And so if, you, if you've used Maya, you're familiar with what a tweener is, but let's play, press Shift E here uh, between this pose and this pose. So we're looking at the character. Uh, we're gonna come to the middle and we're gonna press Shift E. And now I can drag and say, you know what? I want this frame to be very close to the next frame. And so uh, your viewport here is essentially from zero to 100%. So I brought it here and it's so that's essentially like 90% of the next pose. So now when we play this, it reaches that pose and it kind of settles in. So this could be a really, use, really useful tool to make some quick settles and whatnot. And so now let's say I want this frame to actually be, so again, I'm pressing shift E here. I want this frame to be very close to the first frame. So the frame before it. So now she kind of slows out of that pose. Tip number nine, this one is going to be motion trails. They're a very, very helpful tool uh, to see if you have arcs going on in your animation, if something's looking jaggedy and uh, you have to fix it, it'll help keep your animation clean. So once you're in the polishing stage, usually uh, you can turn on the motion trail by going to pose, motion paths, and calculate and here it's asking you uh, where do you want to start where do you want to end so i'm going to, i'm going to say end it by frame 40 so start at one end at 40 and okay and now we have the motion trail for the uh, for the cog the center of gravity and so it's showing us that we're in this pose right here and so if we move this you can actually see the motion trail move as well so you can adjust accordingly to create a nice arc this is obviously a terrible arc, but uh, I, I didn't really make an animation here. I just made two poses. So motion trails are very, very helpful. Track your arcs with motion trail. And last but not least, tip 10. <laughs> this one is, I'm hoping it'll be a life changer if you're working in very, very heavy scenes. If you have multiple characters and sets and everything, 
So what we're going to do is come up here and I'm going to create a new scene. So again, if you did, if you missed it, we came up to where it said scene. We clicked on the two papers and create a, created a new scene. So we're going to name this character. Okay, done. Now, let's go back to our original scene. I'm going to select my rig. I'm going to select my character by holding shift. Now I'm pressing control L. That means I'm creating a copy of a link. Essentially, I'm trying to link the character into our new scene. So I'm going to uh, go over here and press uh, character, which is the new scene we made. This is just saying, where do you want to link your character to? So I want to link it to the new scene, which is named character. Linked. And now when we go to uh, our other scene that we created, we can see our character here. There's no box. There is nothing else in that other scene except what we selected, which is our character. And the cool thing is, as I mentioned earlier, this is linked. So if we come here and change, either change this or let's, I don't know, let's move the character all the way here. And oh, we gotta have uh, this on to set keys. Make sure to turn on auto key again. Then I'm gonna to come to frame 60, move the character here. And now if we go back to our other scene and we play this, the animation actually applied here. So everything we do in the other scene gets mimicked here as well. Uh, except the benefit is when you're in this scene, you'll be working a lot faster because none of the other stuff, none of the background, none of the other characters in this scene will be here. So this had been an absolute lifesaver for me uh, in my last production. I learned about it near the end, unfortunately, as, as I did most things, but I hope this has been helpful to you. If you, any, if you know any tips that have saved you time while animating, definitely drop a comment down below, let us know, share with the rest of the class. With that said, I'd like to give a huge thank you to my beautiful Patreons. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. And with all that out of the way, happy animating and pre-sign up if you're interested in the extensive Blender animation course we're working on. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Link for that down below. Bye.